I filled out victim impact statement after victim impact statement, you guys, and nobody's doing anything for me. Now, you know, I understand we're between a rock and a hard place. I've even contacted the attorney general about this. What we All right. Do, as far as well, we, I need we, we need medical attention. What we can do as far as the, as far as the, the paperwork, we're going to check into the. Um, well, see, here's the problem. The I have a guardian, and my guardian is supposed to be responsible for that. Isn't that how that goes? For your medicating for everything assistance. well see here's the thing i've also got military benefits i am listed in the in the computer as totally permanently incapacitated to military dependent so you know where that would make a, things kind of sticky with this whole situation especially when i they re-injured me at the hospital and you know that could have killed me because you know we're talking about brain stuff here I've got, you know they they my son will verify that they found pieces of my skull missing from the outside, ma'am, and pieces of my skull moving around. Wouldn't you think that's kind of serious? Yeah, it's not serious. Don't you think that's a little life-threatening? Yeah, that's why we, we need to figure out why the paperwork that you said, what, what needs to be filled out, what needs to be done so that- Well, wouldn't you contact my guardian for that? He lives in Galeen. His name is- his number yes. and everything? Um, you, Alvin, you want to get your military ID card? Thing so that we can show it to these people. I probably, I assume you guys would want to take so, a picture so of that. Is that yeah. why, um, so, so you say you out the, the paperwork for it. Well, see, we've been to court already. We went to court 15 years ago behind this stuff. So that should be on record. See, but we're a different department. We're, um. Yeah, but you know, could you please talk to Dobrich? Because that's the judge who handled my case. Yep. Okay. And Lynn Harrison was the, um, the DHS caseworker. Just so that you're aware. We've also had, we also had a dude named uh, Fondango come out here when we were next door when I had my custody, temporary custody of my god kids. Okay, which kind of perplexes me with the situation how I'm getting custody of kids. I can get custody of any kid but mine. Isn't that kind of concerning to you? Doesn't it kind of not make sense? How, other than... And then there was another caseworker involved. Her name was Gwendolyn. Okay, look, I'm going to show you this. We have to have this back because it's evidence. Okay, you see that? That's got his social security number. That's all. And actually, he's also his um, his um, dependent, as you can see from that. Okay. What is the, what is the, uh, the guy's you say? His name is Richard Carl Erickson. His date of birth is June 26, 1950. Okay, and I believe if I'm correct, you I mean. Phone number? No, I don't. Because, mm -hmm. see, he, he wrote me a letter. Mm -hmm telling me don't ever contact him again when he's got my assets my property and everything you know all, all that stuff was willed to me and the military his name's kevin kimes he's located at great lakes in, up here great lakes um naval air station at the jag office his name is kevin kimes I he has the will phone number. i don't have his phone number ma'am so you no. say i have, contact your i don't he he abandoned us see this is the guardian he abandoned us we have no he told, he wrote me a letter and I sent that to the Congressman Upton, telling Congressman Upton, showing Congressman Upton that he told me never contact him again. And that my kids were not my kids, which dumbfounds me because friend of the court has, has a documentation showing that there was an agreement between him and my mother regarding my son. Now that's not legal, is it? You work for Department of Human Services. That's just not legal. You can't adopt somebody and there's a previous agreement with them, right? Did he just say that he was, um... So this is he filed... That's my biological son. He filed a birth certificate in the state of California. That's fraud, sir. Now, you see why we're having a problem here? I kind of have reason to believe that some of this is political because there's some other stuff going on that happened to me in Washington State. No, I don't want you to get concerned did with that. Did you live there? Yes, I did. Okay, and, and do, do you have a warrant out of that? I have a warrant for absconding, according to them. Now, here's the situation with that. A girl tried to, she, she drugged me and tried to sexually assault me. In the process of that, she stole some of my property, some of which belonged to my son. you know her name? No, I don't remember it, okay? Because I have amnesia, you know? All right, if, if that's understandable oh, to you me. guys. This happened with her, it was over 20 years ago. And my son will verify this, okay? This happened over 20, over 20 years ago. This was when uh, Bill Clinton was president. At the time when they had the Kenneth Starr and Ollie North thing going on with him. Okay, well, there were four of us. This woman. I do have the number. You do? I'm oh, beautiful. 
Here, here's your ID card, son. We don't want you to lose that. Well, anyway, the whole thing went like this. She attempted to rape the four of us. Oh, shoot, Not separately just, now, mind you. Talk, talk there were kids present at each incident. Mm -hmm. Minors, which we have reason to believe she touched them too. Yeah, the only one she didn't touch was me. She did touch me, but not the way she touched the other girls. Okay, well, the thing about it was this, sir. She had, um, how do I say this? She stole some of our stuff, like trophies, okay? And we got upset, you know, we have reported everything. We did the right thing. We followed policy and procedure. Well, in the process of that, the local authorities covered it up. Okay, and you know, that's not has anything to do with you guys, but it's still a political thing. All right. Well, I fought it. I went to court and I told them at court, hey, we were abused. I, we tried, we broke into our house and we went and got our stuff. Oh. The only stuff we took was her stuff. And I did, I took a DVD player, but I did that for the purpose of evidence. Okay. Okay, so that I could verify, hey, we did this for this reason. Well, another friend of mine, her husband went to beat Nana. Okay, and I helped her. And her husband, he was, he's, a, you know, people, things happen between people, just like it did with me. And, you know, that's a part of this story I need to bring up. You know, I'm married. I didn't know that. I have a common law marriage. And see, that's a concern to me, too. Because I have amnesia. Yes, and it's legal in the state of Michigan. Hold on, we'll get to that in a minute. All right, I want to finish this with Bermerton. I don't want to get sidetracked. Okay. Well, I went to court, and I told them in court, this girl touched all four of us. Okay. And then they wouldn't leave. This was in Washington State, okay? I told them, I told the military people, NCIS knew about it. And they said, we can't help you right now. But trust and believe me, not if, but when, when, not if, when, we will get back to this matter. Okay? They told me they were going to come back and they were going to deal with me with this situation. Because then I expressed to them that my rights were violated. And I knew that because, you know, I'm a Navy brat. I was raised on bases. Yeah. So I know policy and procedure, code of ethics. I know um, chain of command, all of that. So I told them I knew what was really going up, going down here, right, with the Kenneth Star thing and Ollie North and all that. Well, anyhow, as it plays out, they, they still proceeded with the conviction. Threw me in jail. After that, I said, no, you know what? I, you know, I got to take responsibility for my actions. So I went to jail and did the right thing, right? However... In this, for the sake of blind justice, Alma, will you grab your sister, please? Tiara, go, honey. You don't need to hear all this. But for the sake of blind justice, I said, I'm going to continue to fight this. So I filed a civil suit in the Ninth District Court in Seattle, with which the people who represented me confessed that there was conflict of interest in my case. Rather than, rather than do the right thing and throw my conviction out, because, you know, that's what the Constitution says. That a person who's, who's had conflict of interest involved in their representation is entitled to immediately, immediate relief. Okay, I know this for a fact because I studied the Constitution. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, anyhow, nobody did anything. You know what they did? Mm -hmm. They charged me with probation violation and threw me back in jail. And then they took me to court and said, well, rather than honor your rights, we're going to charge you with six months. And they gave me, since I was out on bond, because, you know, my parents were really concerned, you know. So they did pay my bond. They told me when I had, um, when they told me we're giving you six months, they told me um, we're going to go ahead and let, we know you got a kid and family, so we're going to go let you make preparations. I feared for my life because, you know. Oh, so that's why, you, that's why they say that you. Yes, I fled. I fled for my life. Okay. okay, when I left that court day, they had sentenced me to six months. That lawyer told me, if you leave and you don't come back, we're getting you for absconding. Hmm. Now, that's kind of a violation after I showed him these papers, right? Showing that I filed a lawsuit and it was the, the lawyer had agreed that they, that they violated my rights, right? Isn't that kind of violation of constitutional rights? I don't know a lot that way. I do, because, you know, so I went... That's not our... Well, here's my thing. You guys know what the code... Of, don't you swear in for a code of ethics on the Bible when you guys take your jobs? You swear in as far as protecting the child. Okay, well, you don't you have a code of ethics that you have to honor? Yes. Okay, well, see, all of this stuff right here violates the code of ethics. The code of ethics that you guys swear to, it's mm -hmm. standard. It's through all the country, and it's also federal. Yeah. Okay, you know that, right? So yeah. it, this is a true violation of code of ethics. Yeah. You guys haven't done anything. I'm yeah, not accusing we, you guys. No, we, I, 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 believe, I believe what you're saying. I believe okay. um, the federal, so we just not, we're not really familiar with federal things. 
Okay, well, here's my concern, dude. We're sitting here. You agree we need medical attention. We need help, right? Yeah, that's what okay. I mean, cause we can, um, Okay, because my thing about it is I need, we need something to get started with this because this yeah. is really big. And, you know, I'm really kind of upset that you came today because today's the anniversary of my mother's death. And I really honestly believe that my mother was murdered in the course of all of this. Just so that you guys know. And also, I told you I'd get back on with James O'Keefe. See, when I was in California, I was 17 years old. I had it. We, I swore on the Bible with him over the phone, and he came and visited me. So I know it's James O'Keefe. Okay, it wasn't just like some hoaxy thing. I swore on the Bible, and he agreed. He persuaded me to, because you know we were in love and all of that, to marry him on the Bible. So you know, after my, uh, here's another big concern of mine with the code of ethics. You know, I had a baby in the course of all of this. I understand, I, you know, I committed adultery for my first two kids. Okay, I got that. I take responsibility for that, sir. However, I had amnesia when I, when I laid down and conceived my last child. So don't you think really that that would be a problem? Because I wasn't knowing that I was actually committing adultery. Well, Isn't that a religious problem? Yeah, and adultery isn't a... Um, it's a sin, dude. A sin, but not a and I can go to hell for it. And granted, I've repented. You know, I prayed to God. I have to do that. Yeah, okay, but so could, no, I'm not. Because I don't, I, don't, I don't know the condition my husband is in. Can you understand that? Yeah. I don't know what this has done to him because he's a journalist. Okay. okay, and I have reason to believe that there's people high up, considering the circumstance that happened in Bremerton, that knew about this. I also want to point out who my grandparents are. Mm -hmm. My grandfather, I'm just going to talk about my grandfather. My grandfather's Bud Christ. He's from Gunsmoke. He acted with Ronald Reagan. Okay. Okay. And my other uncle is Kenneth Ting. He's from China. See, he's on. The, he's a commissioner with the Board of, uh, of and Against Corruption in China. So this kind of causes us to be a little bit of a of an international deal here. Here, you know, when my uncle finds out about this, he's gonna be really pissed. So I really like to do something about it and do it peaceably. Can you understand that? Yeah. I don't, well, and that is why we are here because we want to help you. And I gave you that brochure with the number. This on brochure it. doesn't help me, ma'am. Well, we need you to call that because that this. Yeah. This, uh, See, I don't want to call, call the crime victims unit. You know why? Why not? Because they helped Victor Fitz hide this. I went to them and I tried to go. I tried, I attempted to talk to them about this at the courthouse. I left several messages with the lady at the courthouse from the what crime victims it? people. This is when I filed a, a restraining order against um, the person who had was responsible for hitting me in the head. How long ago? How long that was the. It was um, 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 the papers are online if you want to look at them. Was it? What it was it? within the. It was within the last two years. See, I have a head injury and they re-injured me, so my time frame. I believe it was in 2016. Okay. Okay, it was in the course of the election, I remember that. Because a couple of days after that happened, a lady came through here, and we had just been to the rally in South Bend. Mm -hmm. I'm not oh. trying to be funny, but that's how I associate it, okay? No, no, it was like, that was, that's yeah, it was, it was a while ago. It was a while ago, okay? But, you know, oh, I contacted the them. Recent, at the most recent rally? No, 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 oh, no. Okay. I wanted to go to that so yeah. bad, don't you know? Because, you know, I'm a yeah. big fan. I'm a yeah, big, big fan, yeah. yeah. Well, anyway, no, um, right after the last... Hi there, God bless you. Right after the very last, um, uh, uh, oh, see, now I lost election. my train of thought. Yes, the last election, or no, it was right, it was before, when the election was starting up. We just, I decided I was going to vote for Trump right when he announced. Oh, he first came. Yeah, yeah, because, you know, I was like, you know, he's different. He's not, yeah. he's not like these other politicians. Yeah, so, anyway, I said, I went to, we decided to go to the rally. Okay. And, well, after we come back a couple weeks, what was it, within, within a couple weeks or so? It was within a month or two, anyway. Here comes, here comes the stalker that got this happen, the one that I had filed the PPO orders against, yeah. his wife. She, she blocked us in, and I got a video online if you want to look at it. Did, did, she did blocked the us in. Did they, huh? did, they, did they grant you the PPO? No, they did not. Oh. No, they told me, they, you know what they told me? They, they would never give me a PPO order. Judge Dodge did that. And you know, it's funny because he's the same one that sentenced the man for um, child abuse. Wait, where was it? Judge Dodge, where is it? That's right here in Cass, sir. Judge Dodge. Judge Dodge. Oh, Do Dobrich? Do Dobrich is the, is the family court lady. She's the one who handled all the family, my, taking my kids. See, Dodge was the one who handled the case where they stole, took my house gotcha. wrongfully. Yeah. The house that's protected by the guardianship. Okay. Uh, Dodge did that. He's also the same one who sentenced Mr. Carpenter, a.k.a. Anderson, the one with the child abuse. Okay. 
Okay. My middle child's father, okay? The one who stalked me, mm -hmm. the one who caused my head injury, and you know, I became homeless, he sold drugs and did a whole, we, we reported all of this stuff to the DHS. Yeah, you? And you know, the, this so department- you reported to us? To y'all guys, yes, Lynn Harrison as a matter of fact. And you know what they did? Absolutely nothing. They threw me in jail. Well, they hunted me down. I'm not talking about you, no, okay? Like don't. Don't, 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 don't. Okay, well, they they helped uh, together unitedly to take me to. I feel that they united with with the um, the prosecutor's office, Judge Dobrich. Personally, the way it looks to me is that they together um, colluded in this. Can you understand why I would feel that way, sir? Well, Especially when this man who was a convicted child abuser, convicted child abuser, had a court order to never, ever, ever go where kids are, are, are dwelling again. And there was a caseworker who knew that. They never bothered to tell me until after I'd had my daughter and he had burnt her with a space heater because he neglected her. He left her by herself while I was at work, mind you. Imagine that. And then he tried to hide it from me until the caseworker found it. This was a whole different caseworker, mind you. So could you understand what the dilemma here? Well, honestly, I know all the stuff that you talked about in the past has affected you now, but now we need to figure out what we can do from here on out. Okay, I agree with you. So yeah. could we find some, could we figure something yes, out? Yes, I, I yeah, do I want, want you to call that, okay? I cannot we'll do that, that because, you know, we're, there's we're an investigation, I'm sure you guys know, that there is an investigation. If there's not, there's going to be, because I've blasted so much stuff online, I'm going to put this on there too. Okay, just so you guys are, I'm gonna send it to every news media cast and there is in the country. Okay, just so that you guys are aware. I'm not trying to be mean or nothing, but I have to protect my rights. Do you understand I that? Because I'm an American, you know, I'm an American. I was born and bred in this country. My family actually has a history that goes back to the Mayflower. Okay, so could you understand why I'm a little upset? I'm a taxpayer, I vote. You know, my family has served a lot with the country. In fact, my uncle, mm -hmm. my uncle was retired sheriff for Cass County, Dick Clark. And you know his son? Yeah. Rex Teller's son. Um, yeah. You know his uncle? I don't know him personally. You don't know, his, you don't know Rex Teller's uncle? Not personally. See, I don't really, you know, I, I was taken from my family when I was young, so I really didn't know about all of this, you know, until recently. But you know who, you know who Rex Teller's uncle is? Mad Dog Mattis. Did you know that? Do you know what that makes him to me since Rex Tillerson's my cousin? That makes Mad Dog Mattis my uncle too, wouldn't it? And see that in there is also mad. Uh, that's um, that's Rex Tillerson's uncle, Richard Northrup. Mm -hmm. Okay, that is Rex Tillerson's.